take care of them. I was a volley. We only had a couple of paid guys. Um, but I, let's see, I think the first year out, I went on 80 calls. And it's, uh, it was uh, 60 minutes from where we were to the hospital. And under the right conditions, I could drive it in 38 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of prayer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it'll do wonders for you, won't it? Driving uh, oh, light yeah. and sirens, yeah. praying to God, please keep us safe. And people do weird stuff when you come up behind it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doug? Yeah, um, so you guys are talking about growing up in a church family, and then leaving and coming back. Could you tell us like when you were baptized? Were you baptized young? Were you baptized older? Is that something that's too personal? Or? Oh no. Uh, Rebecca was baptized as a young girl. I was baptized young, but I, I was baptized again after becoming a believer. Um, she had she had an encounter with God and, and had saving faith young and wandered. I did not. Um, I got baptized because that's what kids were supposed to do at a particular age in my church. Um, whenever I, faith was my own, then I got baptized. And that would have been um, 20 years ago. And then we entered ministry a couple of years after that. So in lay ministry and professional ministry we've been doing this 17 years now. The attorneys are told to never ask questions unless they know how it's going to turn out. So, Mike? What's your uh, preaching outline for the first? Oh, yeah, so um, here's how it's going to go. This it's nice to share testimony because God has done so much for us. My passion, oh, I want to get back to this and preaching. Next week, I will be preaching on my favorite Old Testament passage, and the week after that, my favorite New Testament passage, in order to give you another snapshot into what I'm like. My favorite Old Testament passage is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 through 14. I'll be looking at it in a larger chunk to get the context, but that is, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of man. For every deed will be brought into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. And then 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, but verse 1 is my favorite New Testament passage. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called children of God, and we are. From there, we're going to go um, a type of preaching called exposition, where we're going to pick a book and move through it. Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 17 will be the sermon after that. We'll be moving through Luke, and when we complete Luke, we will move to the Acts of the Apostles, uh, as we learn together what the first church looked like, and uh, sort of weigh ourselves in a sense. Yeah. So when you were called to, to, to ministry, was it something that you just, I mean, how did it happen? Was it that you saw the changes in your guys' lives and the blessings that God was giving you? Or did you just, um, you know, wake up one morning? Did God call you? I mean, did he speak to you? I mean, how did you come to the decision that you wanted to go into ministry? Sure. There, it started when men saw something in me that I wasn't mature enough to see yet. Uh, the mature among us, the older men and older women, have got such an important role. And so the people that were discipling me were seeing some changes in me and the way I was reaching out to others, and they decided that teaching in the jail ministry would be kind of a, uh, a test to see if what they saw was real. And I started as one of the teachers, and then I ended up being um, in charge of it a few years later. It was terrifying. 
<laughs> I don't know if I seem comfortable. The first time I had to speak publicly, I cried. Um, if, if I think about it too much, my hands will still turn ice cold and I'll tremble before I get up here. It was a big deal. I mean, the most comfortable thing for me about going into the jail is I knew the guys there. Um, as I learned to teach, there, there was some of that, getting to see the changes. Now, there are jailhouse confessions, and not everybody that responded to the gospel really did. But some did. And that was exciting. And then I came to the point where I couldn't conceive of any other choice in my life. And whenever I told Rebecca that, and she's like, nope. <laughs> oh, that was hard. Um, but she, we talked about it. She, she was right then. She says, I don't think God will call you and not me. And um, along with that, checking in with the men still and spending time with the pastor, I needed the older men to confirm the gift. And once that was confirmed, then I went to school and um, it's the same. I, I've had a couple weeks off and I don't know if that sounds... I mean, it always sounds good, right? A couple weeks off. I really need to get back <laughs> in the pulpit and preaching. It, it's where I feel alive. Sure. So this was actually for Rebecca. So you said that um, when you left home in Alaska to go to college and you ran away, did have, I mean, this might be really personal, have your children stayed within the church throughout their um, transition from child to adulthood? I can answer that. Sorry. Yes. Our daughter Erin has not. Uh, she has chosen a lifestyle and a way of looking at the world that we do not share. So, I, I've got to be careful because she knows her life is not meant to be um, illustrations. Most teens go through a rebellious period, and we had to have a conversation where um, our children have the power to disrupt our family life, but they do not have the power to make me not love them. And because of that, we are still very much in communication with her and enjoy a great relationship. We love her dearly. Ethan has. Uh, while he was in basic, he continued making it a point to go to chapel and not just to sleep on the back row, although the chaplain was allowing it. Uh, when a young man died during a training exercise, my son was part of the prayer circle to pray for his family. And when he realized the chaplains in the military have to shoot for the widest common concept and he did not, he was not feeling fed. Uh, he asked for my sermon manuscripts as we preached them, and he and the guys used them devotionally. Uh, so that's very exciting to me to see him continue. We pray for our daughter. Um, he didn't let Rebecca go too far. And we are we are asking our Lord to not let um, Aaron go too far or Roscoe, although they met at um, a Bible camp in the summertime. Uh, they've heard the good news. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what, what's going on for us. What about uh, <clears throat> on a more personal level, like hobbies and, and stuff like that? Do you fish, hunt? I didn't get to do much hunting, which is weird being in Alaska, right? Because um, things were always so busy, although we were on the uh, roadkill list. A moose gets hit by something, and there's still a lot still to be used there. Um, fishing, I used to fish um, for mud cats in ponds in Iowa. I love doing stuff like that. Mostly I like being with the guys that do stuff like that, because uh, one, getting to spend time is one of my favorite ways of doing ministry, just time. I like shooting recreationally. Um, we're hoping to see something like that get started. I like to reload. I, I'm not into it very big yet. I'm using a hand loader because I can do that in the wintertime when it was dark. 
I'd like to see some of that. I read a lot. I like to cook. <laughs> you can probably tell. Um, <laughs> and uh, but I, I'm looking forward to trying some things here, like uh, digging for clams. To me, that sounds awesome. I mean, I hope it does to you. Um, cranberry box. I grew up around farms, and I know how corn and soybeans and stuff are grown. Cranberry bogs are awesome. Being around things that grow again, uh, I want to. I want to know more about that. Uh, I did get to go fishing in uh, Valdez with my fire chief once. We went on a silver run. Um, didn't get any halibut at that time, which was sad because my son was looking forward to shooting a fish before we brought it on board. <laughs> um, I used to trap when I was in Iowa. I didn't do much of it in Alaska, though. Yes, Jane? Um, what about your parents and uh, your connection with them now and your, your family? Well, like Rebecca said, we're still in the process of trying to heal some of the things with her folks. Mm -hmm. uh, my mama died 10 years ago. Um, and uh, she had... She had come to faith later in life. I now, I've got the Bible she was using in her last couple of years. And my father, uh, my father, eight, seven, seven, seven. My father's been married seven times. Um, but I should, I should frame that in that while he was younger, he, his life was not um, very commendable in some ways. But he came to a very solid faith as an older man, and um, he's married to Anne now, but when he was married to Patty, he was married to her for like 30 years. And uh, she had a stroke and got very sick. And as a son, I got to watch a man who used to run from hardship, embrace it, and he began taking care of his wife and other people and putting others ahead of himself. Uh, whenever it came time to take care of my mother's estate, he was Johnny on the spot with helping with the, the least glorious tasks. And in the last few years, he's become one of our supporters and a Christian man that I call and ask for advice. Uh, so the restoration of that relationship has convinced me that relationships can be restored. like um, Stephen Lawson. I mentioned him before with The Attributes of God. He's written several biographies of people of the faith, and in them he breaks down theological concepts that were important in their life and ministry. Uh, he wrote one on the gospel focus of Charles Spurgeon. That's another one of my favorites. Uh, his Treasury of David was very important in the formation of my faith. Uh, I've been told that I have tried way too hard to look like him. Uh, if you know what he looks like. Uh, I, uh, I've got a, a pretty fair amount of MacArthur books. I go to the Shepherds Conference a lot. I do like a lot of that. Um, and I'm a big fan of the Puritans. If I had to pick one, I would probably say um, Richard Sibbs. Uh, Richard Sibbs wrote a book uh, called The Bruised Reed, and it's where he talks about the assurance of faith that Christians have even when they go through trials, and he uh, bases that off of the um, prophecy of the Messiah, that a bruised reed he won't snap off, and a smoldering flax he won't extinguish. Um, but I like him because of the way he writes. He was called the Heavenly Dr. Sibbs because it was said that when he preached about heaven, he lifted the congregation up high enough that they could glimpse the glory from afar. So I got I got my answers. Um, you take Christian writers and stuff, and I was thinking, oh, my favorite one's Paul. 
And I'm just wondering, how important do you place on these non-apostle writers compared to what's in the Bible? So if we're going to go with that, I'm going to be with Paul there with you too. I like the way he writes. Um, although uh, the, there's uh, some personality traits of some of the other authors that really stand out too that I really like. Um, the additional writings, things like um, Spurgeon and others, have to be read devotionally in the, in the sense that um, we have this great cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us. And we don't always have to recreate their work, but we should always double check their work. And none of these men are perfect, and I know that because I'm not, and they're just a person like me. Where they diverge, they're wrong. And the places where they're right, they're only right insofar as they agree with the book. We're a little bit past the time we might ordinarily, um, I would ordinarily speak for about 42 minutes, give or take. So if it's all right, um, we'll close with a benediction. And uh, then uh, if you have further questions, I will probably talk longer than you want to listen. <laughs> um, but let's uh, stand and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.